Hello, my name is Tabitha Tripp, and I'm the owner of Tender Hearts Home Health Care. I want to welcome you to the show. This is Navigating the Way for Seniors, and we have been doing a series on healthy aging. And I'm really proud to welcome back Kim Ferreira. Hi. Hi, Kim. Thanks for having me again. Oh, it's, this is great. Kim is a registered dietitian with Coastline Elderly Services in New Bedford. Today we're going to be talking again about heart health and the effects of sodium. And we all know that sodium is one of the what, four basic uh, sens taste sensations. And we all just love to load on that salt <laughs> because of the flavor. But the effects that salt has on our body is not always good if we use it in excess. So today we're going to talk about how much sodium and salt should one have? Well, sodium is quite the hot topic. <laughs> Um, why, um, you know, one in three people have high blood pressure, and we know high blood pressure leads to heart disease, which is the number one killer. So, um, in terms of sodium, the problem is, is that our body doesn't really need that much, and we tend to eat a lot of it. Um, our body only really needs around 300 to 500 milligrams what the current recommendation is. Any guess? That's 300 to 500 milligrams, milligrams a, a day. day. Wow. Any guess on how much we need a day? It just changed within the last couple of years. I have no idea. Well, um, the American Heart Association said that we need to be sticking to 1,500 milligrams. And that goes for anyone older than 50, anyone who is African American, anyone who has had a history of high blood pressure or heart disease. They need to stay as close to 1,500 as they can. If you're not in that category, then the recommendation is less than 2,300 milligrams. So we're kind of in this range between 1,500 and 2,300, depending on the health organization. But we kind of stick to the Heart Association right. since, you know, um, they have that standard with sodium relating to right. the heart, 1,500. Okay. Um, salt and sodium really are two different things. And I, you kind of put them together as being the same, but they're not, are they? Everyone says it's the same thing. And when I say they're not, they say, what? Okay, tell us the difference. Sodium is a mineral. Sodium is a mineral that is, is found on the earth that's found in food. Um, food has calcium, food has phosphorus, food has iron. Those are all minerals and we have to lump sodium in that category. Celery, celery has sodium in it. Um, fruits and vegetables have a little bit of sodium in it. Celery has sodium? It does. Peas, I think a half a cup of peas has 60 milligrams of sodium. It's natural, that's the mineral okay. that's found in it and we have to compare that to the other vitamins and minerals that we think about. Um, again, we don't need a lot of it. It does occur naturally in food. Salt is also, um, it is found naturally in, in, in the earth. You know, salt water, that is, it is mm -hmm. salt. Um, but what we, what we normally see it as, as the chemical form, salt is sodium chloride. It's the chemical compound that we see um, in the market as table salt. Okay. That is actually sodium chloride. So any time that we have a product that has salt in it, we know we're consuming sodium. Okay, we hear so much about the negative effects of salt, consuming too much, but there are also some good properties to salt also. Absolutely. You know, we, we do need sodium. We do need sodium. Sodium. I'm yeah. calling it salt, and that's, that's wrong. Yeah. I should be calling so it we sodium. We do need the mineral sodium. Sodium is vital for fluid balance. We need that correct fluid balance for our kidneys to function properly, for our heart to function properly. Sodium is key for nerve function and muscle contraction. Well, what is our heart? Our heart is a muscle. muscle. So sodium is considered an electrolyte because it's one of those key compounds that we have to have that correct balance or it will throw off um, our heart rhythms. So sodium is so important for that. But again, we don't need that much of it to achieve those basic functions. 
Um, and we eat a lot more of it, so uh, you know it ends up being a, re a result of mm -hmm. heart disease and high blood pressure. So we'd be better off eating sodium in a natural form, like you said, it's in celery and so many things, yep. in a natural form than using table salt. Absolutely. Um, all of the natural forms of, of sodium in food, they're small amounts. I mean, um, we're talking about 60 milligrams in peas. We're not talking about 600 milligrams because you've added all these things mm -hmm. to it. Um, so we're going to get sodium in those natural forms. And we're not worried about the sodium that come, that's naturally forming in foods, like milk. Milk naturally has sodium in it. I think it's around 125 milligrams. We can't take that out. It's just part of the product. Mm -hmm. We're not worried about that. We're worried about the other foods, which I'm sure we'll get into in a okay. minute. And you, you, you already told us earlier the, nat the uh, current recommendations. Yes. Current recommendations are 1,500, 1500 milligrams a day. Now, is that whether you're a young person or a senior, does it matter? Well, uh, the recommendations are typically for anyone 50 and older or someone who's had a history of heart disease right. or okay. high blood pressure. So if you're not in that category, then the correct recommendation would be less than 2300 mm -hmm. you know and really if you can get to 1500 that's great because we we don't need we don't need the amount that we're eating okay now am I correct in saying that sea salt is better for you than regular table salt I know that there are some things that I really like the flavor of sea salt on mm -hmm. but I mean I can just grind that little grinder and keep going so you have to watch that too Correct. Absolutely. There are different types of salts. Um, sea salt, I think, is um, the type of salt we're seeing a lot more, especially within food marketing. The typical salt we're, f we're used to seeing is that plain old um, table salt. Um, another common one is kosher salt. You mm -hmm. will see that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then sea salt. I'll use those three because I think predominantly those are the most popular. So kosher salt is totally different from sea salt. It is different. Again, it I is thought different. that was the same. Nope. So table salt has a very small grain to it, as we know if you pour it, you know, mm -hmm. the simple salt shaker. Per teaspoon is around 2,300 milligrams of sodium in one teaspoon. Sea salt, a lot of those sea salts, you can go from something very basic to something very, very um, exquisite and rare. You know, I've seen a black sea salt from the volcanoes of Hawaii. You're going to pay six dollars for a small bag of it, but these different sea salts, um, they're known because they don't have many additives in them. They, they contain a lot more minerals and therefore they also contain a lot more flavor. However, don't be fooled because per teaspoon it's the same amount as table salt. Yeah. Kosher salt also has less additives than um, table salt, may not have as many minerals as sea salt, but because the grain is a little bit bigger, per teaspoon, it just doesn't carry as much sodium. So I tend to prefer the kosher salt because per teaspoon, it can have almost less than half of the amount as table salt. Does kosher salt have more of a flavor like sea salt? It depends on the type. It will have more flavor than the table salt, mm -hmm. but depending on the actual sea salt that you get, it may not hold up to to that. But you know, when we're really, really concerned about the amount of sodium, um, I, I I I know that there's a brand out there that per teaspoon has you know, I think it's. 1200 milligrams per teaspoon versus 2300 milligrams per teaspoon. So that's a really, really big difference. That certainly is, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that yeah. because I've had a tendency all this time thinking that um, sea salt is better for you. So I'm just like loading it on. You know, it, ha it may carry more minerals, but let's think about the bigger picture. But the sodium content. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it may have those minerals, but let's get those from food, not from salt. Right, <laughs> right. good point, really good point. Uh, what can we do to uh, lower? Oh no, let's go back. What are some of the main sources of sodium in the American diet? Yes, yeah. main sources of sodium is, believe it or not, it's not the salt shaker. We always used to say, don't use a salt shaker, don't use a salt shaker. 
that only comprises less than 10% of what we're getting. So it's important, but you know, everybody says to me, I don't use salt, I don't use salt. And, and it doesn't matter. They're just not doing this with they're it. Not, they're not doing this, but it's now getting to the point that it's almost irrelevant because right. I need to know what are you actually eating. You could be eating nothing but processed packaged foods which contain a tremendous amount of sodium. Um, you may not use a salt shaker, but you may be eating three times the amount of sodium in those packaged foods. So anything that's processed, um, anything that comes in a package, anything that comes in a can, um, in a container, those are going to be loaded with sodium. Cured meats, so unfortunately linguisa oh. um, and bacon and sausage, those all have a lot of sodium in it. Mm. Um, other things that have sodium is meat. Meats, believe it or not, I'm not meats, cheese. cheese. Cheese unfortunately has a lot of sodium. Um, items that, you know, I really encourage you to look at too that we may not realize is cereal and breads. Cereal and bread can contain a lot of sodium. Because it's all processed. It is processed and, you know, salt does help to keep things longer. Mm -hmm. So it has to be in a lot of those products. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring this one out, not to call out any brand name because it's all high, but baked goods, ready to make baked goods. Um, this one in particular, thank you, Grandma, for sending this from Michigan. <laughs> um, but a one twelfth of the package, which is usually one um, one cupcake or a slice of a slice of cake, is four hundred milligrams of sodium in a package of cake mix. One serving. One cake, serving. One serving. So a twelfth of the package, which is usually one cupcake or you know a twelfth of a slice a thing of cake, four hundred milligrams. We think of this as being sweet we forget about the sodium components that are in there right. to make this product what it is. So, Like the baking soda. Baking soda, there's sodium phosphate, sodium, I think aluminum we saw in here. All of those are derivatives um, of sodium that will be in, that will add, increase that sodium. So I love to bring this up because mm. people always think about popcorn and chips right. when sometimes the good old baked goods have a lot more sodium than those salty, crunchy items. That is really interesting yeah. because when I think about something like a cake mix, I, I worry about how much sugar is in there. Yep. You know, boy, that's way too much sugar for me. Not even thinking yep. that it has too much sodium. And remember, salt adds flavor. So anytime you're taking something away, if you're in a grocery store and you're mm -hmm. worried about sugar, if you have a product that's lower in sugar, take a look. It's going to have more sodium in it. Right. Same thing with fat. If you take fat out of the equation, a lot of times there's more sodium and, and sugar, sugar in it. I learned that the hard way yeah. by buying fat-free products for yep. a while. And someone said, have you ever really looked at the label to see how much sugar content is and in it that? And it can be confusing, don't yeah. get me wrong, but those three components, salt, sugar, and fat, all provide flavor. And when you take one out, something else has to give to create that flavor, put that flavor back in. Right. What can we do to lower? I, 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 this is the fun, I know, this is the I fun know. stuff. What can we do to lower our sodium? Okay, so what I've done was I put together some very common meals and snacks that people eat all the time. Um, Any time you can do these homemade, you can't compare. When you know what you're putting in your food, that makes the biggest difference. For purposes of this show and to show convenience foods, but still simple ways mm -hmm. to lower the sodium, um, you know, I wanted to show there's very easy and affordable things. All of these items are comparable in price um, when I went to the grocery store. So I just wanted to say that up front. So, of course, anything done in a natural form is going to be better for you. But in the fast-paced world we live in, and we, if you we live have a alone. lot of products right. like this that we use. Right. And if you live alone and if you're someone mm. who's sick of cooking or you don't like to cook anymore, you know, when I show you these the kind of a, a, a day's worth, you can still be pretty adequate um, in sodium without going overboard. So we'll mm -hmm. start with breakfast. Okay. Good old breakfast. Now, I noticed the box of instant cereal. Yep. I had that in the cabinet with my children all the time. Oh, absolutely. Because it's quick and it's easy. Oh, absolutely. You know, you'll find these all over the place. You know, there's now there's weight control, there's lower sugar, there's lower, there's increased fiber. 
but we do have to be careful. You really need to read the label because they can be loaded in sodium. But I want to show you a very quick comparison and how it adds up throughout the day. One package of this, um, and some of us may eat two or three packages, mm -hmm. 230 milligrams of sodium, okay? In one package. In one package. Yes. And like you said, they're small, so exactly. I've always had a tendency to eat at least a couple. So now let's go to plain quick oats, okay? Um, this may this big container may cost you a little bit more than this package, but you're gonna get 31 servings out of this versus 10 servings out of this. This is worth your money. Um, this is maple and brown sugar. I brought some plain old brown sugar from home and some oats, mm -hmm. quick oats. No, no processing done to this. How many milligrams of sodium? So, all right, in the package box it was 230? Yep. For one package, yep. one serving. Now we um, have quick oats and brown sugar, both separate components. I don't know, maybe about 180? A big old zero. Wow. Zero. So you're automatically making a huge difference by going from your regular oats, adding what you want in your oatmeal, whether it's dried fruit, whether it's a little maple syrup and brown sugar. Mm -hmm. In terms of sodium, you're making a huge difference. Huge. Yeah, huge difference, especially if you carry that throughout the day. Next is a snack time. It's snack time. Peanut butter crackers are a favorite. It's great. I love it as a dietitian because you're adding your nice carbs with your protein. Many of us buy these already packaged peanut butter crackers. You know, they're in vending machines. They're easy. They come in the packs quick. of 10. Yep. Once, once again, I they were staple food in the house when my children were growing up. Absolutely. For one package, 300 milligrams of sodium. One package. Wow. For six crackers. Okay. Instead, I wanted to break it up. I bought a Triscuit, which is a whole grain cracker. It's called Hints of Salt. Six crackers are 50 milligrams of sodium. That's very low. And then I combined it with an unsalted peanut butter. Um, so you could take 12 of these crackers to make six of your cookies with peanut butter. The amount of sodium is 100. So Compared to 300. And you're actually eating more because these crackers are going to be a lot bigger and thicker than, mm -hmm. than these. So another nice difference there. Lunch time. Homemade soups, you can't beat them. Many of us, again, go to the canned soup. Um, we're going to use just the basic chicken noodle, um, you know, as basic as you can get. Chicken noodle soup. One can. I'm using one can because most of us can very easily, if that's our lunch, mm -hmm. have a whole entire can, which means there's two servings in here. Um, one can of regular chicken noodle soup. 1,780 milligrams. That's My more word. than what most of us need in a whole day. And that's not even um, taking account crackers you add or if you have a sandwich. Right. Um, so if you look a little deeper, you may find chicken noodle healthy choice, okay? Um, that's getting a little bit lower. That's at 820, okay? We're doing better, mm -hmm. but take it another and that's step. the healthy choice version? That's the healthy choice. There's a green heart on it, if okay. you look. There's a green heart. Okay. Yep. So that's healthy choice. Healthy choice. If we take it a step further, Chicken noodle also comes in what's called low sodium, people for re sodium restricted diets. And we'll see a huge difference. One can, 280 milligrams. 280 compared to 1780. 17, That's a 80. huge difference of sodium. Um, and it's going from reduced sodium to low sodium, big difference. Mm -hmm. And once again, <clears throat> I feel like I loaded my children with sodium all their lives. Canned soup is so easy for lunch for children. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of it's, that's why it's important to look at the label. That label creates a huge difference. If, if this 
is a huge change for you going from that really high mm. salt flavor. You know, bring it home, add some flavoring right. to that bulk, that soup up to achieve the flavor that you mm. want using maybe some spices and herbs. So last is dinner. I'm using common products, like I said. For many of us who live alone, or, you know, especially in the winter, normally mm -hmm. we have snowstorms. So, you know, hopefully we come across this winter without any. But if we have a time where we're stuck or we want something easy, um, we go to these, these dinners. Which are staple foods in the Absolutely. freezer. Absolutely. You never know when you're going to need Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But these have come a long way. Again, um, I think the banquet was two fifty on sale. The healthy choice was $2. In terms of sodium, um, huge difference again. I chose two Salisbury steaks, so banquet, Salisbury steak. Banquet. Sodium, 930. 930. Okay. 930 for that. Um, and now healthy choice, which is 50 cents cheaper. Healthy choice? 500 milligrams. 500 compared to 930. 930. That's almost double. Um, a lot of people ask, what should I be looking for when I'm buying a packaged item like this? Keep in mind, it does have your starch and your vegetable. The goal is when you're going to buy an already prepared kind of frozen dinner, you really want to stick to 500 mm -hmm. or less. And there's a lot of different brands out there that you can achieve that, that amount of sodium. So you're saying when you have to have prepackaged food in your freezer a meal as a yep. staple food yep. you know like you said if there's a snowstorm you can't get out or you know a lot of our seniors don't cook big meals so right. you know if the daughter's not bringing something over it's so much easier for them to grab something like this they should have it less 500 milligrams or, or less, less of right. sodium right exactly okay so at least you know you're in the ballpark of you know um, not overdoing it because mm -hmm. you also have to take in those other meals that you're eating throughout the day. Right. So drum roll, by making these switches, you have gone from 3,200 milligrams a day to, a day to 900. Wow! What a huge difference. That's a difference of like. 1300 milligrams of sodium. That is almost that is a, a whole nother day's difference. worth. And these are simple switches that you can do that in terms of cost will still be affordable. Mm -hmm. um, when you break the components down and you buy those separately, in the beginning it may cost you a little bit more, but you're gonna find it's gonna last you a lot longer right. and you're gonna get a lot more servings and use out of it. Plus the health benefits, you just can't compare. Absolutely. I, um, I'm, I'm thinking that start your children while they're infants. I became a grandmother on New Year's Day and I'm already telling my daughter, don't give her the candy, don't give her this. Start her when she's young and she's not gonna miss it. Right. I mean. And I'm sorry, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, I, 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 I bought these crackers. <laughs> I did. It was easy and quick. They're in their high chair. You just give them a right. cracker or you throw them in the, the backpack and, and take them with you. They're so much easier. But just to spend that couple extra seconds making them and putting them in a baggie, Right. The health benefits you're giving your child is just so much better. Right. And, you know, there's nothing wrong if you're on the go and you grab these every once in a while. But if these are, if this is the type of eating that is the everyday type mm. of eating, then it is important to think about how, how can I make those simple switches that I don't feel like I'm sacrificing. Right. Um, and, and sometimes and that's it's what just it's the, little, the little tweaking along the way that makes a it's, big it's difference. It's the five minutes that you slap some peanut butter right. on some crackers and you exactly. throw it in a baggie and go. Yeah. Um, so. yeah. Time to take a breath. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> thank you, Kim. Oh, thank you, Tabitha. Um, this is just great. Um, for those of you that don't know it, we are doing a whole series on um, uh, healthy eating and healthy aging and what you're eating. So uh, make sure you tune in next time. And also, if you would like to get a copy of all of the series that we're doing, um, look at the uh, screen at the end of the show, and it'll give you all the information. But thank you so much, Kim. Thank and you, And I Tabitha. look forward to the next show. I know. Me too. Thank you. Thank